So, today we'll start a new series of messages on heaven. And so hopefully over the next few weeks, we will take a look at what the Bible says about heaven. And I know we have you thinking, oh, I've got lots of questions about heaven. So let's pray and get started this morning. Father, this is the word that you've given me. I'm just the messenger. It's not my word. It's your word. I can't stand here as a man and help anyone because I'm flawed and I'm a sinner just like everyone else in this room. But here's what I know that I stake my life on and I know to be true. Your word changes lives. Your word is the power to change this world. Your word is what every person needs, not just to hear it, but to trust it and to believe in it. Through the good and through the bad of life, trust your word. So let us not be people that hear the word and we don't put it into the practice of our life. Don't let us be people that just hear the word, but we have a different opinion, so we do something else. What a grave mistake that is. Let us hear your word, obey it, follow it, and trust it. And in doing so, we will find the best life. Your message in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, the Bible makes it very clear, there is no question about it, that God created people to live beyond life on earth. Actually, the Bible teaches that God created us to be eternal beings. You are an eternal being. The soul and the spirit of a person never dies. When God created the first man and woman, He made them to live forever on earth as long as they did not do the one thing that God told them not to do. Now people say, well, why did God give them that one thing that He told them not to do? That's called God made us with free will. You have the ability to make choices. I have the ability to make choices in life. And many times what happens in our life is because sometimes we all, can I get a witness, we make good decisions and bad decisions. So God made His people a free will, and in the first man and first woman, He said, look, you're living in paradise. You've got everything here. Just don't do the one thing. Or you will die. Well, they did what most people do, is that they doubted God's Word. They didn't trust God's Word. How many times do, thousands of times do people sit in a church service and listen to the Word of God, they see what God has to say, and they question it? Big mistake. So they questioned God, and because they did, what happened is that because they did that, what brought about upon them and the rest of the world was death. Death. Everything dies. Now, statistics tell us that someone dies in this world every 1.8 seconds. 1,001, 1,002, somebody just died. 1,001, 1,002, somebody just died. 1,001, 1,002, somebody just died. Over 150,000 people worldwide die every day. Their body goes in the ground, but the soul and the spirit, which is the inner person, goes to one of two places. Etern eternity, one of two places. Either heaven or hell, one of two. Now, I know you're probably thinking, oh, please, Lord, don't let him preach on hell today. <laughs> Can't take it. I'll get to that. That's coming. But today, we are going to focus not on hell, but we're going to focus on heaven. And so we're going to start a series based on the fact that every 1.8 seconds, somebody dies, and where are they going when they die? 
one of two places. And here's what most of the world thinks. It's what we all think. I'm not going to die. It's somebody else. It's not going to be me. I'm not going to die. Somebody else. And as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, God tells us we should have in our daily thinking, in our weekly thinking, in the thoughts of our life, there should be thoughts about heaven. A certain amount of our thinking should be looking up, not looking out. God tells us that heaven is such a wonderful place that we as believers, to get through the chaos of this world, we got to sometimes think about what's coming. Put our minds on eternity. Actually, the Bible says that God has put eternity in our hearts. So Colossians chapter 3, which I ask you to turn there, I want to look at this and get started with this on the subject of heaven. Colossians 3, 1 through 4 says this, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are below, above. Seek the things in your life, Christian. Seek things that are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on all the things that you want to do in life. Is that what it says? No. It says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. You're going to go to heaven. Set our minds on heavenly things, not on earthly things. And what happens to everyone, if we're not careful, here's what the world does to us. All we think about is the here and the now. That's it. We watch too much news, just turn the news off. I just had to turn the news. I'm over the news. I mean, it's just, it's just garbage. So I just, turn, I just can't listen. I'm like, man, it's just polluting my thinking. Get you all just worked up over things that don't even matter. And so <clears throat> we get so entangled with the affairs of this life that we forget as followers of Jesus that <clears throat> this is not our home. We ain't made it home yet. Right now, we're just staying in the Holiday Inn. You get that? You just, you, you, you just in a, we're just in a hotel. Yet we invest everything, all of our time, all of our thoughts, all of our energies, everything we have just pours right into this earthly living with no sense of thinking about <clears throat> where we're going. Our thoughts get consumed with the daily life and what we're doing right now. But God says, set our mind on things above heaven. God says, set your mind on where you're going. God says, think about what God has prepared for us. Don't be consumed with everything in this life. We should think about God, heaven, and eternity. But here's the truth. How often do we really think about heaven and eternity? We don't. So let's just be very honest with ourselves this morning and ask ourselves why that we don't really think about heaven that much. Well, and the answer is the reason why many Christians don't is for what I've already said. Satan in the world gets our mind locked in on horizontal living. Yet, God says that we need to understand that all of this earthly living that we invest every bit of our energy into, it will not go with us into heaven. And God says that we should, as believers prepare ourselves 
for where we're going. Now, how many of you take a trip? You go camping, you go off, you go, you say, hey, we're going to go on vacation. Did you do not prepare yourself for what? The trip of where you're going, right? We prepare ourselves. So God says one of the things that we should understand is that, hey, we, if you're a believer in me, we're all going to heaven one day. Get yourself ready for that. So here is one way God tells us that we prepare ourselves for heaven. Matthew 6, 19 through 20. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures. What's it say, church? In heaven. In heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. I'd like to say, and I've preached on this many times before, this, it, it's kind of like this. There's a bank in heaven. It's called the eternal bank of heaven. And many Christians are going to, you're saved, you put your faith in Jesus, you're going to make it to heaven. You're going to get in the door. And, but when it comes time to stand in front of Jesus and receive rewards for what we have invested in our life here, the bank's going to be empty. Because so many people that are believers don't realize that what we do for the Lord on this earth goes with us into heaven. And we'll all stand, reward gain, reward lost. One of the two. And I preached in series before the different crowns and the rewards that God's going to give us one day when we get to heaven. But for so many of God's people, although they may be there, there won't be any reward because they didn't prepare for heaven. Because let me tell you what they did. They took all the treasures that they had, all their time, all their talent, all their finances, all, everything they had, and they just invested it in earthly stuff. Do you know when you leave here one day, 1.8 seconds, somebody just died. 1.8 seconds, somebody else just died. When you leave here one day, you don't take nothing with you. They put you in that box and put you in the ground. And they can put all your necklaces and your gold and your diamonds on your hands and all that stuff. That stuff's just rotting in the ground. You ain't going nowhere. You can spend a million dollars on a house, but let me tell you what's going to happen one day to that house you just spend a million dollars on. It's it going to burn up. It's, it's good to have nice things. God wants us to have nice things. It's good to have a nice house and nice cars and nice things, but if that is our focus as believers, we have missed the mark. We have invested everything we have in us and self and earthly stuff, and we don't have nothing going into the bank of heaven. Nothing. God says, get some treasures in heaven. You say, how do I do that? Give some of your time and your talent and your resources and your life to Jesus. When you invest in heaven is when you're doing something for the cause of Jesus Christ, and that can be done in many ways. Now, let me give you a little simple example. The ladies that teach the children in the back every week that they don't get to come in church, let me tell you what, you're doing, what they're doing. They're investing in the treasures of heaven. Amen? Yeah, they're making that sacrifice. Investing in the treasures of heaven. All the years that we had vacation Bible school and all of you come and you were wore out, exhausted, but you got off work and you came anyway and you served at vacation Bible school and you handed out cookies and you, and you loved on the kids and we taught them lessons about God and we taught them about Jesus and all these things. You invested in the treasures of heaven. You're sending something on up there. That bank in heaven. All the people that you witness to in your life, at the job, your neighbors, your friends, and one day they come to church and they turn their life around. You invested in the treasures of heaven. But what do we do? We get caught up in the affairs of the world. 
And Jesus said that all the things that we invest our life in, we need to make sure we're investing in where we're going. Because one day we're going to stand before the Lord and what we do for Jesus goes with us. You say, you don't understand. I got a safety deposit box and it's just full of money and all of that. Man, I got diamonds and gold and all that. Well, good. Give the church some of it. Because one day that bank will be set on fire and it all burn up. What's it going to do for you then? What we do for Jesus lasts forever. So God tells us that we should think about heaven and think about our future. Why? Now let me give you something very helpful to you this morning on why that we should think about heaven. Listen to me carefully. Because it will bring you comfort. Comfort and hope. Everyone in life needs comfort and hope and strength. And when we all at times need, with all the things that go on in our life and all the pressure and all the stress and other things, we need to think about something that's comforting to us that brings us some peace and some joy and some good thoughts. And if a person just thinks constantly about things happening in the here and now, you know what happens when we just think about Everything on earth, all of our responsibilities, all of the stress, pay the bills, do that. What's going to happen with this? What's going to happen with that? How is this going to work out? You know what we have in life? We have a whole lot of nervous, worrying people trying to figure out and deal with all the things of this life. And God says, from time to time, you need to take your mind off of that and put your mind on things above. And when you think about God and how much He loves us and how He's prepared a place for us called heaven where we will live with Him, it'll bring you comfort. It'll bring you comfort. God says, put some of your thoughts on where we are going and how amazing this is going to be for us and there will be strength for your soul. So God loves us and He wants to help us. And one way to help us is sometimes we got to take our mind off the world and put our mind on God in the future. Think about heaven. Now, if we're to ask many Christians, are you ready to go to heaven? Most of them would say, well, I want to go there, just not right now. Amen? (laughs) Just not today. And the reason why that I believe that you don't hear a lot of messages on heaven and Christians don't talk about heaven is I think Christians are nervous about heaven. I think we have, we're anxious. It makes us nervous. I want to go to heaven, Pastor Rick, but I'm afraid. I think a lot of Christians are afraid of heaven. So we don't want to think about it. And I think the reason why that we're afraid of heaven is because it's unknown to us. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't, we're, we're, we're unsure. And, and, and people don't like unsure. People don't like to do, get involved with something that they don't know what's going to happen. You ever somebody said, hey, we're going to go so-and-so place, and you say, well, what are we going to do when we get there? I want to know what's going to happen before I get there. If anybody ever come to you and said, hey, come on, go with me. We're going to take a ride. Uh, where are we riding to? Amen. I ain't getting in the car with your crazy self until I know where we're going and what we're doing. That's kind of how we think is that we want to know what's happening. What's going to take place? Where are we, how, when we get there, what's going to happen in heaven? So I think that for a lot of Christians, it's the unknown of heaven that makes us fearful. And the other thing is, is that one of the reasons why we don't like to talk about heaven is because we don't have full trust in God. You don't have full trust in God. And let me tell you what that means. 
When you have full trust in God, think about this. If God loved us enough to let His Son come to this earth and die for us, how much more is He doing for us to prepare heaven for us? You don't think that God would send His Son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven of everything and we could have eternal life and be in heaven and all of this, and we get up to heaven and it's just a broke down place, do you? <laughs> you know, oh, you got your little mansion and ain't got no windows and doors. No heat, no air conditioning. We get, you, if we trust God, we say, God, you gave your life for us? My goodness, how much more can we trust you with what you're preparing for us in heaven? We don't trust God. So we're afraid. That's why people don't like change. Same reason. Change is something new and unknown, and it makes people feel uneasy. So many unknowns about heaven, people don't like to think about it. Well, do you want to stay on earth and deal with all the stress of this life? It reminds me of the Israelites. Some of you know this story. God sent Moses to the Israelites. After the Israelites prayed and prayed and prayed, God, we're in slavery, we're in bondage. Set us free. God heard their prayer. God sent Moses in to take them out of slavery and send them off to the promised land, a land that was prosperous going to be wonderful. But along the journey to get there, things got a, got a little bumpy in their journey. And you know what many of them said? Let's just go back to Egypt. We'll just go back. Let's just turn back to this life. When, if they'd have just stayed focused and trusted God, Many more of them would have made it to the promised land, but they didn't. You know, most of them died in the wilderness because they didn't trust the Lord. And the same thing is true of, of us thinking about heaven. Sometimes it's like God's taking us to the promised land, but at the same time, what we don't, we're like, mm, no, nah, just let me stay on earth. I, I'm good with earth. And so what we want to do over the next few weeks is I'm going to do my best to tell you, tell you every detail about heaven in the Bible. Because I want you to see what God has to say about it to build your confidence so you can be comfortable about it. So you can say, oh, that's what's going to happen in heaven? Oh, I was thinking that it, we were all going to be in white robes floating around in the clouds. You never get to see anybody's feet because the clouds is all around. Oh, I thought we were going to be angels. Nope, you're not. How many people think well, when I get to heaven that I'm going to get angels' wings? Nah, you won't. You say, why not? Because angels are angels and humans are humans. <laughs> you don't get angels' wings. It's not what the Bible says at all. So we have this misconception of, you know, like, oh, we get to heaven, it's just going to be one big church service for 10 million years. Now, I want to tell you, I love church. But, uh, you know, it comes a time where, uh, you know, I need a break. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can't watch for so much, uh, so many preachers on TV. I'm like, okay, now I need to go get a sandwich or do something, you know. So we have this misconception on what heaven's about, and we don't have an understanding. And so we want to start looking at it. I want you to know what it is. So let's just get a first little glimpse. And we're going to go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through 8. We'll put it on the screen. All things made new. Now, God tells us that the earth as it is now, that He's going to destroy it at some point in time and make it all new. And the reason He's going to destroy it and make it all new is because it's 
polluted with sin and death and hurt and pain. So God took John the Apostle and said to John, John, write these things down. I'm going to give you a glimpse on the future and how heaven's going to be. New heaven, new earth. Revelation 21, 1 through 8 says this, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now how many heavens are there? Three. We'll get to that later. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adored for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people. God Himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the waters of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now we switch. Not everybody goes to heaven. But the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and the sexually immoral and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. I don't know why that, that just, I just see the world today as a big bundle of lies. Shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You die on earth. Then you stand before God. If you're going to go to hell, you're going to give an account for all your wretched life. And then, hell. When God made the earth, He made it perfect. No sickness, no death. You ever think about that? What kind of life would it be if nobody died? But again, as I said at the beginning, it was contingent on man and woman trusting the Word of God. But they did. And because they didn't trust the Word of God, then God said, you will now know evil and experience evil. And in the eyes of God, now we, people can look out and say, the earth, earth is just a wonderful place. In the eyes of God, it's evil and it's sinful. You think about the world in which we live. Yeah, we can find good. You can find good and bad in everything. But you think about this world today. There's murder constantly. You know how many people were just murdered just last night across America? Thousands. They're stealing, people taking things that don't belong to them. They didn't work for it. They didn't earn it, but yet they'll take it from somebody else. There's wars. There's always talk about one country at war with this country, this war going on, that war going on. There's greed. There's selfishness. There's people that just hurt and cause pain to other people, innocent people, every day. There's fighting. There's division. There's wrongs. There's little to no justice in this world. You know, we, we want justice. I, I'm a person of fairness, and I, it just rubs me wrong when things are not fair. Fair. But... Sometimes we find that in this world where there is no fairness. How many of you ever been treated unfairly? Raise your hand. Amen. You ever got any justice yet? You probably hadn't, right? 
You just got to kind of just press on and give it to God. There's death. There's loss of life of people we love. There's sickness. There's great sorrows. There are trials and tribulations and troubles. There's the, the, the feeling of rejection and abuse and depression and fear and anxiety. There is millions of tears shed in this world every day. Right now, as we sit in church, I can tell you there are people in this city that are sitting home right now that are emotionally broken. They are crying. They're hurting. Loss of a loved one, broken marriage, something with their children, their own personal battles, they're crying. But here's what God has done. God says, for those who believe and follow me, He said, I have prepared a place, a new heaven and a new earth, a holy city, where people will live, listen, and here's just one part of heaven. Let's go back to it. Make sure we get it. Revelation, here's what it says. And God says, I'm going to wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrows, no more crying, no more pain, because God says, I'm going to make all of that pass away. Who did it? Jesus did it. Now you think about all the hard, gut-wrenching things that hurt our life. How many things have just come upon you in your life and hurt you very emotionally? And you can try to hide it and mask it, but down on the inside, man, it hurt. Things that bring emotional sorrows, things that bring tears. And God says... I got a place coming for you that will be no more of that. No more of that. All the tears will be no more. All the sorrows will be no more. You know what I found as being a pastor where people cry the most is at a funeral service. I don't care how tough you are, how hardcore you are, when somebody you love dies, it's loss. Why? God made us relational people. We connect with someone. We love them. And they love us. God made us creatures to love one another and to love others and to be with them. And when they die, there's emptiness. When they die, we hurt. And God says, look, you might think you like earth, but I got something to go beyond your imagination. I got something for you and all the people that you love that make it to heaven by putting their faith and trust in Jesus. You'll never lose them again. You ain't got to worry about losing your child to death. You ain't got to worry about losing mom and dad. You ain't got to worry about losing a spouse. All these people in your life, God says, I, in heaven, nobody dies. It's gone. The greatest fear in life is death, and God says, I'm going to take that away. It's been eliminated. Gone. You'll never make a connection in heaven and love people and say, whew, I hope I never lose them. I literally love them. Never again. And then in this world, there's so many things that bring us sorrow. You know how many people today, millions of people that are just depressed, depressed, and trying somehow to deal with their depression and their anxiety and their nervousness. And somehow, how can I escape the pressures and sorrows of this life? Life is so heavy. Life has so many responsibilities. Life has so many injustices. Life has so many things that's just unfair. You ever had your kids say, it's just not fair. Yeah, that's true. It's not. It's not. 
All of these things that people, we're all trying to cope with life. And here's what people do. I see it everywhere. People think, I can't deal with this life is so sorrowful and it's so hard. And so i got to somehow find some relief and some escape. And so you know what they do? They start drinking, using drugs, living off some pills and some medication, all trying to mask the pain and escape. Now, those of you that's lived that life, you know what I'm going to say is that that don't help you at all, does it? Matter of fact, it makes it worse. All the years of people drinking alcohol just so they can kind of just numb themselves to get away from the pain of this earth. But when you wake up from that drunk, it didn't get any better, did it? It got worse. And all these people in this world trying to just find this peace of life because the sorrows of life are too great. Broken heartedness. You know how many people are broken hearted? They thought their life was going to turn out a certain way. They thought that something was going to happen in their children and then by some tragic accident, their children are gone. No more sorrows. No more pain. Gone. The former things of this world, God says, Pass behind you. Can you and I imagine a place? Now think about this if we were living this today. All of a sudden, right now, God says, There'll be no more death. Don't worry about going to the doctor because you don't have any illness. Don't worry about getting old. Now, what I want to do is like, I, I'd like to get my wrinkles to go away and my gray hair to go away. So I'm hoping that when I get to heaven that God turns me back to that 30-year-old stud. Ain't that a laugh? <laughs> so God says to us through all of this, He says, imagine no death. No sorrows, no pain, no depression, no anxiety, no worry, no nervousness. All of those things, he said, I got it. Think about that, because it's coming. Whew. See, in heaven, the funeral homes are out of business, amen? If you're an undertaker, you don't have a job when you get to heaven. In heaven, there's no cemeteries. You don't have to go visit nobody at no cemetery. In heaven, there are no doctors and no hospitals and no nurses because nobody gets sick. There is no uh, pharmacies that you have to go to and pay an exorbitant amount of money for a couple pills to kind of keep you going. Amen? Pharmacies are out of business. There'll be no drugs, no alcohol, no prescribed medications for people to cope with the sorrows of life because it won't need be necessary anymore because God says, where we, I'm going to take you, all the sorrows are going to be gone. No more broken hearts. No more tears of sorrow. How many times have you ever just, just man, just cried for somebody else? You have a wayward child. You have a Somebody in your family you love and they're sick and it's terminal. Gone. And that's just to get started with heaven. Heaven's beyond our imagination. So there's nothing to fear. It's God preparing a place for the most valued thing in the universe, which is us. And God says that if we will set our mind on these things, instead of setting our mind on earthly things, it'll bring us comfort. I can tell you this already. You've already got comfort from listening to what we just talked about. To think that God is doing all this for us. Comfort. God says, put your mind on things above. And then the final question, and I close are you going to heaven? Are you going? 
And I hope you don't think, well, I hope so. You got to have more than hope so. You got to know so. Can a person know? Absolutely. Can you have absolute assurance that heaven is your home? Yes, you can. Have you put your faith and trust in Christ as your Savior? And have you seen your life change to want to follow Him and be like Jesus? Do the things that God wants you to do. You see, if you say you believe and trust in Jesus, but you live the same life as everybody in the world, you didn't get what you think you got. Something's amiss. Because when the Spirit of God comes inside of a person, there's evidence of change. It's a different life than the rest of the world. Even people that got saved as children, although they may not see a, that drastic change in how they, a lot of people have in their life, they live different. They live different. It's something that you have in your heart. Are you going to go to heaven? You better ask that question to yourself. And if not, today, make that decision to give your heart to Jesus Christ as your Savior. Heaven. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for the comforting words that you give us, that you prepared such a wonderful place where we will live one day and experience all the things that this earth that brings so many hardships and difficulties gone away, removed, place called heaven. And God, I love everyone in this church. And I don't, I want us to all be there together. But God, I, I have to be honest and say I have doubts that everyone that comes to this church is really saved, born again, believer and follower of Jesus Christ. And God, I pray you'll speak to their heart. And don't let their, don't just grab a hold of their soul and don't turn loose of it until they make that decision to know for sure that heaven will be their home. Heaven will be their home. Let them make that decision today if they have any doubts about it whatsoever. And help us to get our mind off of everything in the world and start thinking about and preparing for the future. Stop letting us invest everything we have, talents, abilities, finances, resources, in the things of this world. Let us stop, God, and let us start investing in where we're going. That's what makes the difference. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I don't know how God spoke to you this morning, but if you have any doubts about whether heaven will be your home, now's the time. You say, what can I do to get that assurance? Well, first, you have to have a conversation with God from your heart to His heart. And you have to tell Him that you, and you have to mean it, that you know that you're a sinner. And you have to look at Jesus and realize that Jesus did do exactly what He said. He came to this earth. He died. He resurrected from the grave for your sins. You personally. Me personally. And you got to cry out to God and you got to tell God, God, I know I'm a sinner and I believe in Jesus as my Savior and I give Him my heart and my life and I want to commit myself to follow Him in my life. And it can't just be a head knowledge. It's got to make it to your heart because if it don't make it to your heart, there'll never be any real change. You need to have that conversation with God today. And then Christian, set your mind on things above. You'll find some comfort in the midst of the storms of life. Don't store it for yourself treasures just on this earth. It won't last. We're going to heaven. Amen. Going to heaven. I'm heaven bound. We'll be with Jesus. Whatever God needs you to tell him this morning or whatever you need to share with God. I just want everyone here to bow your head, close your eyes and you just whisper and pray and you talk to God and tell him 
whatever you need to tell him this morning from your heart to his heart. Pray, tell God, talk to him. Lord, open our eyes to the future. Help us to get our eyes off the things of the world. Help us to realize the value that we have as children of God. Help us to realize that you're with us every step of the way. We don't need to turn to the vices of this life. We just need to turn to Jesus. You are our hope. You are our strength. In you we live and breathe and have our being. Thank you, God, that you're preparing a place for me. I don't deserve it. I've done nothing to earn it. But yet, your grace covers all my sins. Thank you, God, for that. Help us to go out of this place and go tell somebody else about you. Help us to be witnesses. Put us in situations where somebody asks us about our faith and let us share Jesus. People all around us in a circle of our life, just, they just need somebody to tell them about Jesus. And every person in this room has that calling upon their life. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Thank you for this church. Thank you for your love and your goodness. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. For His sake. Amen and amen.